Hello, Andrew here again, and it's been a while, but what I have here is the end farm design that Shars and I have been working on for the past eight or so months. Now, this design is much uh, nicer than most of the other ones I've seen because, uh, for, well, for one, it's the fastest that I've seen, and it brings all the Endermen down to a 2x2 two two area so you don't have to walk around to get the experience. It uses a stacked shifting floor design coming into a funnel and then a 42 block fall bringing them right down so you can get at them without even having to walk around. Now this is a very fast design but uh, if that's not enough for you it gets the mob cap in roughly 15 seconds, starting from nothing. So, uh, if you watch the top left, you can watch the entity count going up from zero. And it takes a few seconds to get the first ones, but that's not too bad when you're riding them on the minecart, they'll already be spawning. So, uh, we've already hit the mob cap now, and while there are only 30 of them down here right now, they're coming down so fast, uh, I think you'd have a hard time punching them to make it run out. And now, if you have two people at the same time, there's a chance that you'll get a little low on Enderman, but all you have to do is wait a few seconds and it's right back up. Okay, I'm going to be using annotations a lot to make this video a little easier to follow. And if you have them turned off, it might be a good idea to use them for this tutorial. Well, this is just an index to give you an idea of the order things are going to come up. And you can use the annotations to jump around and find things a lot easier. This mob farm is most efficient with six layers, but you can still get the mob cap in as few as 30 seconds with only two layers. Uh, uh, you can adjust the layers based on how fast you need it to be and your available resources. But if you add anything over six, six layers, you're not really gaining anything because the Endermen have a lot farther to fall from the top as well. Now, if you're just going to be doing six layers, this is a list of all the items you will need. I have 24 redstone blocks, 223 dust, and uh, this will be available in the description or in the world download. I'll have these signs to the site. And uh, as you can see, it's a little more expensive than a uh, very basic design like Panda has, but I think it's worth it for the speed and functionality you get. But if you want to do different amounts of layers, uh, you have the base list of items here. Uh, this is the amount of items that you need just to put the funnel and everything else in. And again, this will all be in the description, so no need to panic if you can't read it all that fast. And for every layer that you want to add above, you have to add uh, all of these items times the amount of layers you want to add. But uh, if you just want to go with the six layer design, which is what I would recommend, you can just refer to the total item list. The total height of the farm starts at 60 blocks, and we have to add 4 blocks for every layer. So uh, with the 6 layer farm, it's a total height of 84 blocks. Now that means that you don't have to start the farm all the way down at the bottom here. You can start it as high as uh, 44 blocks up, and you won't load the top halves of the chunks, and you'll keep it oh, good bit more efficient, especially on the slower servers. Once you've gotten to the end and taken care of the dragon, you just need to pick a good place to build the farm. Now the nice thing about this design is that uh, since it's so much shorter than the usual designs, you don't have to go down as far. And uh, with any end that you would get, you don't even have to pillar down with uh, any of the tricks like the lava and water. All you have to do is go down to 40 on the Y. 
that'll give you plenty of room to build everything. And uh, you'll probably want to go out in the direction closest to the platform, spawn platform. That way you won't have as long of a trip from the farm. And I just want to take note of the coordinates of the farthest area sticking out here. And uh, right here the X coordinate is the one that's changing. So I want to go out from 116x and uh, it should be fine as long as we go out 130 blocks, but I would say 160 is much safer. So I uh, just shift walk and place the blocks however you'd like to and go out 160 blocks. Okay, once you've gotten out this far, uh, you just want to find the center of the chunk, and uh, that's on the second group of information on the top left, uh, right after the coordinates x, y, z, you have the c, and uh, for the x it says c17, then in parentheses you have the 3, and uh, you just want to take this all the way out until that says 8, and then uh, for the z, we are right on zero here, so we either want to go to the left or to the right, whichever one makes it easier for you to do the rail. And so uh, you just want to make sure both of those are 8. So uh, that will put you right in the center of the chunk. And from here, I just need to come up a couple blocks and put in the landing pad for the Endermen, just as a reference point. You don't have to raise it up two blocks, but I would uh, definitely recommend it so that you have two layers in the floor. And that way, uh, if you have any lag issues, you won't end up falling into the void. And if you're doing this in survival, you're definitely going to want to build a temporary platform. Uh, you only need to go, say, 10 blocks out on the side. And that should uh, keep you relatively safe. And uh, definitely either put torches or water on this platform so the Endermen don't spawn. Okay, once you have the whole platform built out, you just want to make sure everything is lit up, including the pathway back to the mainland. Otherwise, you're going to have a rather tricky time getting back without an Enderman knocking you off. So, uh, you just must just get started on the funnel. You need to look at the Y coordinate of this platform, which uh, in this case it's 42, and come up three blocks. And you want to remember where that 42 was. And get some glass. And just make a ring around the platform at the site. And uh, it's just generally a good idea to just put the ladders up on your way up. But just make this tower all the way up to uh, 42 higher than the height of that platform. So since this one was at 42, we need to come up to 84 with this. Okay, once that tower is done, you just want to come back down to the glass and start building it up all the way until it's two blocks shorter than the tower in the middle here. Now the last two layers are going to be the building block you want to use. And for this I'm using blue wool just because I think it looks nice. So two layers of this and we can start the funnel from here. And uh, just to make this a little safer just fill the last two holes here. Okay. The uh, basic shape of the funnel, 
It's a pretty simple pattern. You just come out two blocks and then up one. On one side of the corner and on the other side you come out one block and then up one diagonal. And just do the same thing for all four corners, rotating it around. And uh, each layer will be getting bigger. So by the end of the funnel, it will be up to a 12 by 12 area. Oh, uh, that's why you want to put water below if you're in survival. It's too easy to fall. Okay. Once you have this basic pattern laid out, you're going to want to put tripwire hooks on each of the blocks that are raised one. And you will not be needing the glass anymore, because all the glass goes into the funnel tube here. So, tripwire hooks all the way around. And string in every place except the corners, and that's just to prevent it from knocking you off while you build it. So, skip the corners. And from there, you just need to put in the clocks at the end of each piece that sticks out three blocks. And that's just a torch on the side here, towards the outside. Lock on that. And then going into two hoppers pointing into each other here. And in one of the hoppers just put one item. And coming off the side of the shorter side here, just go with a comparator, a repeater, and then blocks all the way across to the tripwire hook here. With dust going all the way. And slabs on top of the hoppers here. And this one block. And those are the only slabs you need. And just do this for all four sides. And put the pistons on each of the blocks with the dust. Alright, now you should have the top layer just about done here, the first layer. Just make sure you have slabs on each set of hoppers and the block with the torch on it. And um, the repeaters seem to work a lot better if you put one set of them on three ticks and the other on one tick. So the two that are across from each other on three and the other two on one. Okay, and for the next layer, 
if you're doing this in survival, leaving those out, you just place the netherrack here, and then make a ring all the way around here. And you might want to put a ladder on the side here, just so you can get up and down a little easier. So, this is the outline of the second layer. And there are five layers in total. Now, once you have the ring of slabs in, I'm just going to come out and do the same thing on the first layer, except wider. So, out two blocks, up one, out one block, and up one. Do that for all four sides. And just repeat the whole thing four more times. This is what it should look like with all five layers in. And on the very top layer, just leave out the slabs and put in a ring of wool instead. And you can leave the slabs off of these top hoppers as well. Because there's going to be a ring of slabs above them instead. So, uh, this is getting to the point where we start doing the vines. And this should be a 12 by 12 opening in the middle of this wool here. And uh, you want to look at the direction where the path is going back to the mainland. Then uh, on the rectangle, or you want to make some rectangles in the middle here. Uh, you come in two blocks from the edge, get rid of these two pistons, and build a platform across like this. Uh, actually, just one wide. And then you want to skip another two, and this time do a two wide. And all the way across. And right in the middle here, make another path across. And that should leave you with four sections that are 2 by 12. And just come in two blocks along each of these. And this will give us places to put the vines. OK, 
Okay. So should look something like this. And facing the mainland with the long sides. So just get your vines out. And run that all the way along here. Over here and here. And these vines will grow down but not sideways. So basically just covering every piece of this around the edges. And all these pieces are sticking out. And every single piece of this that's got the slabs below it needs to have vines to prevent fall damage. So uh, that's the top part. Got vines all the way around the edge and then the inside parts here. And the parts are sticking out too. So just come down and directly under each of these rows or in this case just the middle row, make another pathway coming out. It's three blocks below, so a two block gap. And put vines all the way along here except where the ladder is. And break the ladder, you'll have to replace it with vines. And come down two more, leave another two block gap. Except for this one, you want to leave a uh, two by two gap right in the middle. And uh, that's so we can put vines right here and they will grow down to here and keep the endermen from getting hurt too early. So I'll just come up here putting vines like this. Just going diagonal down each time. So have a bit of a slant going on. And above every piston there should be vines. Now if you're having a hard time getting all the vines right and you're getting a lot of them that are getting hurt, uh, you can just always check the world download. And there has to be a world download because the schematics, at least if you're using world edit, never really paced quite right. So, uh, just continue with the slanted pattern going all the way across here. Both sides. And you can put them here, but you don't really need to. They'll grow on their own. Just putting them there to speed things up. So uh, you should have vines above every piston and on every edge that's above, directly above the slabs. That should be enough to stop them from getting hurt. And if you want to be safe, just go through and add a couple extra. What you're going to do is take a tiny bit longer to get them to the bottom. Now I've had some cases where they still get hurt with this, so it's usually a good idea just to add vines 
on the other side of the very edge here. And uh, they'll grow down quite a bit, but that's all right. And also all the way across right above the middle here. Both sides. That should cover everything and give these time to grow while we build the shifting floors above. Now for the slabs on these hoppers, it's actually going to be up like this. Uh, just thought that made it look a little nicer at the very top. And because it has, it has to cover this dust. And just coming out like this. So I got four over here. The line going all the way across and two over here. And just mirror that on this side. So four here. All the way across. And the two here. Okay, now I'll come up two more blocks here. And just fill this in all the way. Tip down to where the opening is here. And back up, down, and up. Just all the way across. And two across all the way here again. And this is where the shifting floors are going to go. Okay, now you kind of have to be a little random on this one, you have to decide which side you want the hopper clock to go, and just to make things easier I'm going to say the hopper clock goes right here. So two pistons in the gap here, and same thing over here. And then for the next two, I'm going to want to come back and put the pistons for this one along this right here. Just Make the wall go behind them like that and come all the way across above these bridges like this, filling that in and then just leaving a too wide, too tall gap all the rest of the way across. So carry these up. And all the way across. And just do the same thing with the pistons on the other side. Except alternating from what was over there. So over here is going to come back like this with the pistons here. And then the ones over here are right on the edge. The next thing you want to do is put slabs Skipping the corner right here with the pistons that are set back and putting a redstone block in that place. So it's 12 across.
and this is just the first layer uh, and the rest of the layers are the same thing except you're stacking them on top of each other instead of on top of the funnel so uh, once you get the first layer down you just have to do the same thing on top of the rest so in the corner here the redstone block towards the inside and for the other side just do it in the opposite direction all the way across and then in the corner the redstone block Now uh, this works on a trick where when the slabs are pushed by pistons, mobs on top of them will fall through and down into the funnel below. So uh, you might want to leave one of them open so you can still get down. And if you do that you definitely want to have some vines or something along those lines so you can still climb up. Okay, now for the wiring. Just need to knock out these blocks. Just the two here, and put dust into a repeater at four ticks, and then two dust on the back here. And you can get rid of that. And this is for the inner one. Then that one on the edge, knock out those two blocks again and also the third one. So a repeater on four ticks, dust, dust, and then coming up like this. And you can get rid of that too. So uh, this is the wiring so that when these slabs get pushed forward, it lights this up and pushes them right back. And for the other side, you just need the block on the side here. And the comparator going into it. And then the block behind that with another hopper clock. So just get rid of the block there and come up like so. And put a torch on the back of this block and an item in the hopper. So you have the block here, hopper block here, two hoppers into each other, and the comparator coming out into a block. And now it's time for some more tripwire hooks. One here. Then come all the way across and right up from the gap between the pistons and the slabs here, put another triple hook and connect the two with string. So, you should be able to see that it works right now. When you hit the tripwire shifts that way and then back. So just copy this wiring all the way across and obviously flipping it for the other side. Okay, now when all those are in, just uh, want to come back around to the pistons with the redstone blocks and Beneath the pistons here, just put a tripwire hook there, there, and on the inside ones here, 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 and here. And what this does uh, is there's a rare chance with the lag that these pistons will get pushed in and these pistons won't update, so the redstone block will be stuck over here. And these tripwire hooks give it random updates so that it will 
push the slabs back where they belong. So uh, there are four on this one and only two on this one uh, because the way the redstone works this one is more likely to get stuck and more tripwire hooks makes it fix itself faster. So if you're having issues with more of them getting stuck just add more tripwire hooks on blocks directly connecting to the pistons. So uh, just it's a little easier and creative obviously but uh, as you can see so you can just break a couple of blocks to get back here or make a little platform and uh, if you don't have blocks under this just add them right there you don't want to put them back you want to put them so as getting both of the pistons so just tripwire hooks all over there both sides and both with the blocks and put back any blocks you had to take out and just make sure it still works and for the last one here I uh, just leave this block out and you'll be able to have your open gap here still so now for the slabs just come over like this covering up the pistons in the gap all the way over here and just carry it over except for the very edge and then on top of all of this straight across to there and slabs on top of here So, just carry this over to the other side, pretty quick. And this will stop Enderman from spawning in the wrong places. all the way except the very edge there. Be careful placing it around the tripwire because it likes to go over your head. And that should block off all of the spaces Enderman can spawn. And uh, it might be a good idea to actually leave this out so you can remember to put the block in there when you're done. Now for the next layer, just come up, leaving a two block gap like this, and make an outline of the shifting floors. And on the very edge, I like to use slabs, just because I think it looks nicer that way. But this can be any solid block, as long as you can place vines on it, it'll work. and come out all the way here and just keep going with the outline and this outline will include the middle so uh, this is just the edge to make it a little easier to see where all the edges are going to be. Just keep going around and on top of every strip going in the middle there do the same thing on this. And this is where the vines are going to go. So just get your vines out. And just going along the edge here. And if the floors keep shifting, just 
take out one piece of string and it'll stop them. As long as you remember to put that back in the end, you'll be fine. So, uh, there are four places to put the vines. And if you miss any vines, you're going to be having Endermen taking damage too early. And that'll have a pretty big impact on the speed of the farm. So it's very important to get these vines right. So I'll just keep going all the way. And if you have any string floating up here, just get rid of that. And to stop these vines from growing down any farther, the side that does not already have string needs to have the string added on. So just keep going along like this on any places below the vines. It's a little hard to get the string right, and if you accidentally place some of the string where the vines are, you just gotta break it and put the vines back. Because this is a very important part. It has to be working right. So this string doesn't actually activate anything, it's just there to stop the vines. If you feel better about putting buttons or something, uh, just keep in mind you won't be able to walk around on the floors anymore. So the, the strip part is definitely a lot nicer for that. So uh, once you have all that in, you just want to come up here and on the sides that have the redstone blocks, you might as well just put your uh, trip wire hooks in. And they go in a pattern like this. Back one and then up diagonal. And the pistons will go right along here and for the next ones in over here same thing up and diagonal and pistons here and you can go ahead and put your repeaters and redstone in whenever you like It's probably easier to just put it in before you have it all covered up. And just keep going in this pattern. And same thing on the other corner. Back one tripwire hook, open diagonal, and another one. And the wiring going along it like this. You're just going to be continuing this for all the layers you want to add. And I would definitely recommend doing the full six layers. Um, anything more than that's a bit of a waste, but all the way up to the six layers you're gaining quite a lot for the resources. So uh, just make sure you have all the pistons in and the tripwire hooks behind them so you don't have to climb up here to fix anything. Uh, that's the nice thing about this design is it fixes itself. Uh, anything short of blocks missing it'll sort itself out. So uh, now I can just build the outline. Going across on top of the slabs here. Skipping this going out one more. and carrying it in between here as well. All the way up to the dust. And stopping at this piece here. And yeah, forgot the dust there, but you can always put it in whenever you want to. 
As long as you get everything in, it'll work. So, carrying this over this way, leaving out that. Instead, going out one block more, all the way to the slabs, and across again. So, from here, we're ready to put in the next set of shifting floors, and it's the same story as below. You're just building it in reference to this layer instead of the funnel below. But uh, just in case, I'm going to show how this goes. Uh, you got the pistons here. And of course the blocks here too. So you got all the pistons going in here. These ones set back one. And these ones right on the shifting floor section. And the comparator is going in here. Blocks behind. Hopper clocks. Two hoppers into each other. Diagonal up with a torch on it. And this is the block where the tripwire hook goes. Just keep doing this pattern all the way uh, for as many layers as you want. And again, I definitely recommend doing all six because uh, for how much you're paying for the funnel, it's uh, a lot cheaper just to add the layers. And remember an item in each of these hoppers so that everything will work. So, uh, just keep going along like this. And then the other side of the tripwire hook goes directly in line above the gap here. For both of them. String all the way across, but I would actually uh, save that for when you have the floors in. So the floors, same thing as below. Got the slabs going all the way across. And on the corner, the very last one, there's a redstone block. So each floor is like this. Make sure so that when the redstone block gets pushed in, it'll be touching this dust. All these repeaters on four ticks and an item in the hoppers and you should be good to go. So just keep going like this for however many layers you want. Again, six is the most efficient. And uh, the only thing that's different is the very top layer. Okay, once you get to the top layer, things change a little bit on the side with the hopper clock. You gotta drop the hoppers down a little bit, just because uh, the very top layer actually ends up with two tripwire hooks just to make it work a little faster. So just come to this tripwire hook and add another one next to it and dust connecting the two. And now the hopper clock will go down here. So it's going to need a piece of dust right here. And the comparator coming out of it, you need to break that slab and put it right here. And come down from there with dust like this. So basically just dropping everything down one block and adding a piece of dust. And just do that for all four of them on the top layer. And the only reason I didn't do this with all of the layers is because you only really need one tripwire hook on the lower layers because 
uh, the Enderman falling from above will start the floor shifting without any trouble. But it definitely does help to do this on the very bottom, I mean on the very top. So just make sure you get all four of them. It will work without this adjustment, but it does save quite a lot of time from the Enderman just standing still. So, uh, very close to finished here. Uh, pretty much all that's left here is to slab the top to make sure you don't have any extra Enderman spawning and take care of all the temporary blocks and make sure everything works. So uh, starting off with the slabs. Just cover all this up. Just like the rest of the layers except there aren't any comparators and blocks in the way over here. And on the very top of all of this, just start putting the slabs along it, over the dust even, and carry it around here. And just make an outline, just like with all the other layers except this time the bottom slabs. So, you just want to make sure there is no area for the Enderman to spawn that isn't part of the shifting floors. You don't actually need these slabs that are already slabbed. I just think it looks a bit nicer having it cons consistent. And uh, don't forget to put the dust connecting and the hooks on all four of these. Let's finish that up really quick here. Just follow this pattern and it'll work just fine. Uh, of course, if you want to change the type of slab or even put glass on top or whatever you want to put on top as long as it prevents the spawning. And make sure you have items in all the hoppers, of course. Uh, it's not going to work otherwise. So now I just need to put the string and the slabs in the middle, and it's done. And for the string in the middle, you have to add an extra tripwire hook on the other side. Just like this, and have tripwire hooks for each of the blocks here, and put the string connecting all the way across. The string is a little tricky sometimes. You have to be careful when you're placing it so that you don't put extras in. On the top layer, it doesn't really matter as much because there's nothing above it that you're going to mess with. But for all the other layers, there's a chance that you'll end up placing the string in one of the vines, and that's very bad. Uh, because then the Endermen will take damage if they fall in that spot. See, like this, the string will place above the other string. And you can hardly tell, but if it's cutting off the vines, you definitely have to take it off and put the vines back. So let's just finish up with the string. I 
if you're having a hard time seeing the string, uh, sometimes it can help to adjust your brightness a little bit, or maybe even uh, find a texture pack with an easier to see string, whatever you want to do. And there's a pretty good chance you're going to fall down. Uh, so that's why I put this netherrack pillar here with vines on it, so you can get back up. So just put the rest of the string down. Last row here. And this should be a working end farm as soon as we get rid of the temporary blocks. So just to make sure you have everything slabbed off. And I would definitely recommend double checking the hoppers if you can. Whether you have to put some platforms around here or however you can check them. It's definitely good to check them and uh, if you run across the floors and they shift then there's def definitely an item in the hopper so that's all you really need to do. So uh, as soon as you're ready make sure you take down any torches that you had to place and just check everything on the way down Getting rid of it as you go. You can just run right across as long as every floor shifts. Everything's good. Check the vines, make sure no strings got in the way. And just do that for all six layers. And once you get down, be careful not to do that. Uh, you're just going to need to go through the funnel, putting in the string in the corners. And you can now place this block right here. And break both of these vines on your way down. Slab there. Okay, now that you're in the funnel, this is the part where you have to be a little more careful. You got the string here, so just put it in the corners. And as soon as you put this corner in, it'll start pushing you. So you can see there the pistons are working as they should. So just come down. If you accidentally break any vines, make sure you put them back because these are all needed. And before you take any of this string in, you're probably going to want to climb over to the other corner here and put this string in as well. And just do this for every layer. Just careful with the vines, of course uh, they need to be above the pistons, but on front of the pistons they aren't going to stay anyway. So just keep going around. Okay, once you have all the string in the corners you just come down to the bottom here and you want to make sure that these vines are growing down and you want them to be down right on the nether rack here. Uh, if any of it's way too far behind you can just place some blocks here to put this, the vines on. But generally it's uh, easier just to give it some more time. And just come down right below those vines and makes a circle of string here. And as soon as you're completely satisfied with everything being in working order, you can just come all the way down here. And you're ready to use the farm. Now chances are you're going to want some decoration down here. And I'll put a link uh, for a couple of suggestions that I've done with the farms that I've made. I have a rail system to get between the mainland and the farm a lot easier, as well as a system to eat the ender pearls so that you don't have your inventory as full from them. So uh, be sure to check those out if you want to make your farm a little more user friendly. But uh, this will work as is. So I'm just going to turn it on to hard here. 
and if you look at the top left, those, they're already spawning. Uh, it takes a little bit for the first ones, but once they start coming, they're going to really come fast. So, just watching them go up to the mob cap, they should stop right around 80. And here we are at the mob cap already. Uh, it actually went a little over, uh, but sometimes that's just from ender pearls on the platform. So, uh, we've already got 60 of them down here. And there are some that will get stuck in the corners up there, but they, as soon as they wander even a little bit, they fall down. So it's not a big deal, and uh, if this video helped at all, if you like the farm, uh, please leave a like so other people can find it as well. And uh, if, if you want to see more like this, I plan to upload others like a blaze farm and the rail system to get around your whole survival world. So, uh, if you're interested, uh, please subscribe and I'll be sure to make my videos as good as I can. And uh, yes, I'm definitely open to suggestions. So, until next time, hope you enjoyed. So, bye.